I have different types of erythroblast. Each of them have different functions. So each of them has a unique appearance. I have early normoblast or erythroblast. Pro, I'll have early, I'll have intermediate, and I have late normoblast or a late erythroblast, right? Late normoblast is like an NRBC. Ignore that person. That's a one of the common cells you'll see in, in the erythroid vein. It's like a normal NRBC. The size is what helps me. Size of an RBC with a nucleus is a late normoblast. Pro normoblast. The function of pronomoblast is to synthesize RBCs, sorry, hemoglobin. The entire cytoplasm will have basophilic appearance because they don't have the protein yet. They have lots of mRNA. The mRNA is going to be very, very active. The nucleoli will be very prominent. That's what your undergraduate taught us, right? So the nucleol is very prominent and the mRNA is active and I'm trying to produce hemoglobin. Golgi apparatus will be prominent. There are few pointers here. Apart from the size, First one, I will see a nucleolus. Second, there will be a Golgi zone. Third, I will have blue cytoplasm. These are classical appearance of a pro erythroblast and they are one of the largest cells. When it comes to early erythroblast or an early normal blast, they also will have the Golgi apparatus. So there is a transition. Pro kind of starts producing more and more and more hemoglobin. In early, the synthesis might not be that much. It will be there distributed. So what happens in early normoblasts is I won't have the prominent nucleoli. It will become stipple. Which means I don't have the prominent nucleoli, but mixture of UN heterochromatin still says it's functional. Right? A stipple chromatin is a classical appearance of a pro in early normoblast. They also will have Golgi because they do still have the function of production and they also will have a bluish cytoplasm. So the main difference between a pro normoblast and an early normoblast is Nucleus. If you have a prominent nucleoli, you call it a pro normoblast. You have a stipple nucleoli, you call it an early normoblast. The clue for an intermediate normoblast is cytoplasm. It has a polychromatic cytoplasm, a mixture of red and blue. And late normoblast, like I said, it's similar to your NRBC. It is NRBC only, right? The nucleated RBC, but in a both normal, right? So these are the ways I'm going to differentiate each one individual of them. That's very, very important. See, when you go to the count of erythroid, it's not required or it's not must for you to say there's this many percent of early normoblast, this many percent of late normoblast. But sometimes when you have a pathogenesis, might be required. Might be required for sure. Because let's say a parvo is inclusion. I don't see them in a late normoblast. I see them in the poro erythroblast, right? So I need to know what cell I'm dealing with. Though it might not be required for me to diagnose every damn thing. But yes, knowing normal definitely puts me a step advanced, a step above anyone who is not able to understand the normal, right? So with this information, it's a very tiny information. Let's go to the microscopy and see which is pro, which is intermediate, which is early and late, right? Uh, ready for the game? You want to look at aspirate, right? Okay. Just a second, sorry. This is the this is a cell which I'm concentrated about. Can I say there's a call case zone? Yes, Colgate is always the clear area, right? I'll just highlight this clear area. I'll erase this at the whatever I uh, drew so that you can easily appreciate the difference, right? There is a clear area. That's Colgate zone. If a Colgate zone is present, there are only two possibilities. It could be an early or it could be a pro erythroblast. Here, if you look at it carefully, there's a very subtle nucleoli here. I'll zoom it if you want. You can, can you see that this entire just let me get my mouse. This entire nucleus is kind of bluish, a pale area. That's a nucleoli, right? I'll erase again whatever I drew. I, I want you to get used to it. It's not like I have a very superb defined nucleoli in an like a myeloblast. A nucleoli. Uniform blue color, a nucleoli, right? So I just want you to keep this in mind. Let's go to the next image. Tell me the chromatin alone. Is it having one nucleoli or a stipple chromatin? Stipple chromatin. Can I also say it has Golgi zone? Little bit clearing close to nuclei. Here also a little bit clearing close to nuclei. It does, right? It has a Golgi zone, a blue cytoplasm, a stipple nuclei. Diagnosis? Perfect. That's an early erythroblast or an early normoblast. Now compare this. Look at this. Can I call this pro? Perfect. That's a pro erythroblast or a pro normoblast. The nucleus is more important. Here I do have a nucleoli, maybe not superbly defined like a pathological thing. Normal, I do have a pale area, that's a nucleoli. And here I do have lots of stippled areas, that's an early normoblast, right? 
Okay, let's go and try to more, try and learn more things. You have an RBC here. Right? You have an RBC here. You have the cytoplasm of an NRBC or nucleated uh, cell here. Can I say this is a bit more dark, darker? It is an intermediate normoblast. The color is more important. Intermediate normoblast has a kind of only chromatophilic. It's not clear like an RBC like this. Right? It's not blue. The mixture of pink and blue, that's the color which tells me it's an intermediate normoblast, right? Look at this. Nucleus tuple, nucleus tuple, nucleus tuple. Do you have a Golgi zone? Yes. Yes. That's your early 